Ladies and gentlemen, today I have a surprise for you, although it's already spoiled because I'm going to talk about this mega panel. It is the first time in Skyhawk history you have seen such a large product come out uh, from us, and it is not a standard product. It is made for a customer, it is made to order, it is specially designed, it's a custom panel, okay? But it is record-breaking, and if you look at it as a whole, you have about 800 hardware components integrated in seven individual control panels brought together in this panel. So, what is it? Well, it's a vision mixing panel. You can see that it has a T-bar, it has transition control sections, it has multi-function blocks, and it has ME sections here and an auxiliary section up here. It's all combined into a solid aluminum frame with a very nice uh, wooden uh, edge here. So, high quality and super nice panel. It looks like a single thing, but it's actually modular. So, that's what I want to show you today, how this panel in generally uh, general is a great solution for an expandable vision mixing um, solution from Skyhoy. If we look at the individual components of the panel, I would like to first highlight that we have the ME section over here. In the ME section, we have buttons with display so you can have dynamically labeled source names, which is, of course, what you see in standard switching surfaces of this size. And uh, by the way, in all Skyhoy products, we put a lot of effort into give you dynamic labels for your inputs so that your panels are truly flexible. That's kind of the heartbeat of what we do. If you look at other things on this panel, we also find uh, the transition sections over here, which features a T-bar, and the T-bar is custom designed Skyhoy quality. So we have a, a very nice little wider handle than you're used to. We have a, um, a curved arm, we have an LED ring built in so you can color code your T-bar. It's a really, really nice high quality component made by Skyhoy, especially for you and of course this project but um, we are very proud of that component. You also find things like color OLED buttons on this panel. These are the high quality edge to edge NKK buttons. So you can, you can show a full color image on these buttons if you want. That could be a, um, a frame from a still store. It can be a, a logo bug that you want, want the button to, um, to bring in uh, on a Kia. Use it for whatever you want. Of course, they are fully um, Unisketch compatible, so you can bring any function onto these OLED buttons and they will show you the text and graphics that comes out of the Unisketch system, which is a, uh, the Skahoy software that runs on any panel. The panel is currently connected to a Blackmagic Design ATEM Constellation 8K switcher system. This is set up to use the 4K mode where you have 40 4K input sources along with super sources, color generators, media players, uh, keyers, I think like four keyers on each ME and it's a, f it's a four ME switcher as well. It has 24 outputs, auxiliary outputs, so you can route anything to those outputs that you want. And as I said, it has like 40 inputs. This panel is kind of perfect for that for multiple reasons. First of all, um, you will be able to manage all MEs on it, even though you don't see it built up to a tr um, direct 4ME situation. But as you saw from the introduction, this panel would be powerful enough to be extended to four true MEs by having this section multiplied four times, built into a frame that supports it. But now let's look at how it works with the ATEM switcher. So in the background behind me, you see the uh, ATEM software control and uh, you can see as I am uh, changing sources on the preview row here, you also see the change down here. If I go to the software and I change to uh, camera number four, you also see change down there. Look at the labels in the displays. You can see the names coming out of the software, out of the switcher onto the panel. Let's um, press the shift key here. When we go to the shift key, it corresponds to when I go uh, shift here, you can see we have now camera 24, uh, 21 here, and uh, it's selected when I push it. So uh, I can also select something for program, uh, camera 24 right there. Over here in this end of the panel, you see uh, color bars, ME 2, 3, and 4 preview. You have super source, color 2, media player 1 and 2. You know what? These are not fixed, although you might think so. 
because this is all configured with the Skahoy configuration interface, which is a web page where you have drop downs to select the sources you put onto the buttons. So it's really just me who decided that this is how I want the layout to be. You can totally scramble it as you want. But if I go back from, uh, if I just disable uh, shift here, you can see the sources like black and uh, ME2, 3 and 4 program, etc., on these keys. Now, there is a little color indicator between the two key rows, and that is designed to give you color coding of your buttons. So I've decided to color code everything white over here because it's normal cameras, while over here I've given a, a purple color to the black bars, I have given green color to the ME rows, etc. So that's another feature of this panel that you have this um, color bar that you can use for whatever you want, including tally indicators if you want. So we have this exact same situation on this panel, although um, the ME and, and it's controlling ME2. That is clear from, from the label we put in here. So you can see ME1, ME2, and because um, I think up here we have ME4. Now, if I wanted to change this one to ME3, I just press this button and you see ME3 appears in the uh, header here and for every single of the labels on this panel. And of course, you also see that uh, the configuration of the buttons here are changing. In the upper row up here, we have auxiliary one source. That's what the label tells us. But I programmed this keypad over here to be a selector for our auxiliary sources. Let's first check if it works. So I think if we go up here and we look at output number uh, one, okay? Output number one. We now see in the software whatever we select for the auxiliary. So we have now camera one selected. I can go two, three, four, and so forth. Camera number 12. If I hold down the shift key over here on the panel, then we can easily access uh, what? Camera uh, 37. So we jump right down there for the output of uh, output number one. If I want to control output number two, I uh, programmed it so that I just press uh, this button. Wait a second. I need the shift key over here. So I go to, um, to the second one right there. I go now to output number two. We also see the label up here. It's updated. I select input camera number three when I press that button. Boom. There you go. If I hold down the shift key, I have access to sources up to 24. So I press this one and I can now select sources for output 24 on the ATEM switcher. And for that one, I can select camera number four. Oh, wait, that was not camera one. That was camera 24 because I had the shift key. Um, enabled. Okay, so that was the ME sections. These multi-function parts of the auxiliary and ME rows can be programmed as you want. I have not labeled them yet, but if you want, you can put labels under the keycaps of these nice buttons. Of course, for the OLED buttons, you have labels coming out of the ATEM switcher, and down here I have selected whether it's key or one, two, three, or four that you select with the OLED buttons for the key select rows. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so camera number one is currently chosen as the fill source and black is still my key source. But now I select camera four as my key source. It's right over here. So you see camera four and camera one is now selected for the keys. Likewise down here for on the first ME row. Um, let's move over to the transition section and um, the multi-function block, if we take that one first, you see very nice OLED graphics on these buttons. So the idea here is that when you press these buttons, you get the media still that you find in the ATEM switcher. That would be one brilliant way to use the OLED buttons. The rest of the keys, that would be up to you, and I didn't program them to do anything but respond to my key press. So they're currently actually dumb with the ATEM switcher, but you can map them to any action you want. And that's a point. That is a multi-function block. So you want it to be, you know, whatever. But if we look at the key section for the uh, transition block, we have a little bit more order in uh, in this case. Let's look at the awesome T-bar, first of all. So, of course, this T-bar, as I said, would have a nice LED ring showing you when it makes a transition. So you see the transition happening here in the background in the ATEM software. Um, that is, I mean, you have seen that multiple times before, but what you haven't seen is a T-bar like this with an LED bar, um, LED ring sitting in the T-bar that will color code it for its action. So that is a unique Skahoy component we just made. If we look at the panel, otherwise we have uh, access to uh, keyers, so we can toggle keyers on and off, which you also see in the software right now. If I do it up here for ME2, um, then you see likewise that I'm toggling keyers. 
I chose these buttons here to be uh, enabling what the labels in the displays are showing. So since I didn't label these buttons, I thought, okay, I will now use this one to select what the labels show. And they show Kia 1, 2, 3, and 4 on and off. If I click here, you can see that this row will have next transition. So when I press this one, you'll get these keys enabled. And if you hold down the shift key on this part of the panel, you can also deselect background if you want. So we go to the lower uh, row of buttons, which is um, transition select. So we are currently on the mixed transition, but I can change to dip. I can change to wipe, stinger. And if I hold down the shift key, we have access to DVE, which is the, the last of the th uh, five different types. We have auto and cut buttons. We have um, preview, transition. And over here in the far corner, we have the downstream keys. So on and off are downstream keys. And if I hold down my shift key, I have auto for the downstream keys. So I can also uh, use a, a blend transition for those. We have tie functions for the downstream keys here. Then I have a number of buttons which are, again, not assigned to anything because in the context of the item switch, I couldn't figure out what to do with them. But these are at your disposal. So you can do whatever you want with these. You can turn on and off the light if you install a device core to do that. So that is kind of the panel at a glance. This will work with your ATEM constellation. It will work with other switching systems as well. So if you think that this looks like the solution to your new switcher system, you don't want to build a hardware panel yourself, call Skyhoy because this is what we do. Not only do we make some of the world's best and most user-friendly broadcast panels for vision mixing, PDC control, camera control, etc. We also do custom work and we are set up to do it efficiently, quick, and as your preferred partner to make broadcast hardware panels for your um, software and hardware solutions. Mm -hmm.